this has been a blessing to you. I, I really, I really been enjoying this, and it's amazing. You know, you, you can preach stuff, study stuff, and you don't, you know, just when you think you got some things, um, you find out that you don't have some things. So uh, this has been good. Today I want to talk about uh, getting out of the nest. We we talked about that nest last week and how the uh, eagle struggled to get out of it. It's one thing for the mother to stir up the nest, but then we have to make a decision to get out of the nest. Amen. So I want to I want to talk to to you today. I want to talk to those that will listen to this because this, I think this is so critical. But before I begin, I want to look at a, a scripture in Romans chapter 1. I have the message translation. And God is so awesome that, you know, people that don't even know the Bible can know of God. And Romans 1.20 tells us that we can know of God by looking at his creation. So, uh, can I get that? Romans 1.20. In the message translation says, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Now that's kind of wordy. But what he's talking about is, he said, you can look at you can look at God's creation, you can look at his animal kingdom, and learn a lot about God, a lot about him. You can learn a lot, and, um, you know, think about it. He, he, he tells us, he refers to the, uh, say, look at the lilies of the field, you know, the flowers. Yeah, look at them. They don't, they not, they not, look, look they're really dressed well, and uh, they don't, they don't go to Nordstrom. He said, look at, um, he said, look at the sparrows, look at the birds. He said, they don't worry. And they eat every day. They don't have barns to store stuff in, and they eat every day. He said, "Look at the look at the bird." He said, "He said, look at the lion." Remember, he referred it to the lion. We did a series on that. And he said, "See, the lion, the lions are bold. They don't back down from anything. They're not afraid of anything." Lions, lions. He said, "Look at the lion." And he he told us. He said, "Go to the ant." He said, "All y'all lazy people, let me show you how to work." And, and those of you who don't, don't, don't understand saving, you need to learn how to save. Ants, ants don't spend it all today. They know that they know that there's going to be another season in their life, and so they prepare for that season today. They work while it's day. And, you know, ants, they work together, and they'll haul stuff, you know, two or three times their weight, and they'll, they'll pull stuff. So he said, look at the ant. And, uh, and, of course, you know, we're looking at, I think, one of his most fascinating creatures is the eagle. And so we looked at several things, but the eagle is a little different because he, I think the eagle, and, and God draws so many metaphors and, and, and so many attributes that he wants us to emulate, but the eagle shows us our potential in God. The eagle shows us how, how to operate in some of the principles of God. And then the eagle shows us the power of God's love and care for us. And so those are the things that uh, I've been trying to highlight and lift out. But I want us to go back to this ego today. Now we started this series talking about how he would give us rest. That uh, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Right? And so we said everyone needs strength. I don't care how wonderful you are, you're going to get tired. See, it's not it's not hard to be a Christian uh, without really walking with God. It's impossible because the world, there's a, there's a pull on this world that will sap all of your strength if you're not having a constant renewal and exchange of God's strength. And that's what he said. He said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew. There's a divine exchange. And, and we illustrated all of that. We talked about that at great length. And then um, we talked about a lot of other things, but I want you to go to Deuteronomy chapter 32 because we talked about this last time, and this will be our jumping off point. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right, Deuteronomy 32, verse 9. And actually, I opened this up last week saying that the, uh, one of the uniqueness, 
one of the things that set the Eagles apart and their uniqueness is how they train their young. How they train their young people. Or young people. <laughs> the, the babies. Verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the place of his inheritance. He found him in a desert and land, desert land, and in the wasteland, a howling wilderness. He encircled him. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. That's the God we serve. But verse 11, he brings in the eagle. As the eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up. You know, I think I, I'm, I'm, oh, I know I told you how when they teach them how to fly, they'll, they'll just fling them out there and uh, let them free fall from about two or 3,000 feet. <laughs> and they're screaming like they bloody murder. And, uh, and then, then the eagle will come to pan, I don't know, the daddy or the mom, they'll come and, and catch him on his wings. So that's what he's talking about. He said he'll take him up on his wings and carrying them on his wings. And so, but look at what he says here. I, I, first of all, I love this image that, that Moses has given us, telling us about the extraordinary care that God has. He said he, he, he takes him up on his wings. God loves you. God is for you. God is not trying. He, he's doing everything he can to see that his people live, live a life that is so awesome. God is good. Can you say that? God is good. Okay. So, now look at the next verse. He says, so the Lord alone led him. So he's basically saying, like the eagle does this to his children, this is how God does what he does for his children. Now, today, we're talking about <laughs> getting out of the nest. Now, I told you last time that, you know, how the, the mother eagle, she, she makes, she, they, her and the father eagle, they go through great extremes to make this thing comfortable, and they layer it uh, with some very, very comfy, cozy things, and and um, but then, then she starts to do the unthinkable. The Bible says she she stirs up the nest, and I, I think the time period some say six to seven months, because she understands that. And and here's where the the parallel comes and the analogy. I love the analogy between us and the eagle and the baby eagle. Well, the, the baby eagle and the mother eagle, God and us, because. She, she begins to stir up the very one that she made comfortable. She begins to stir up the nest to make it uncomfortable. And the reason is because she, she understands that the nest was made, but it wasn't made for them to stay there. It was made for them to start there. The nest is a part of the process. And God stirs our nest. Because sometimes we stay in a place that we weren't supposed to stay in. And the mother eagle knows that I got to get them out of this nest because what was made to be their warm, comfortable incubator can become their coffin. And so he says, she says, I, I got to get them to develop and to be everything they were designed to be. And so God says, so it is with my people. And so God will stir your nest. And sometimes we call it the devil. I love to blame the devil for everything. I love to. But quite frankly, he's not responsible for everything that goes on in my life. I, 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 if I could, I, if I can get away with it, I blame him for everything because I hate him. But the deal is, but the, but the thing is, God stirs our nest. See, sometimes we get too comfortable. And if we get comfortable and stay comfortable, we can never develop into what God wants us to be. And so why is it, though? Why does he stir the nest? Because, because the nest was not designed. You cannot realize your potential in the nest. It's designed to, 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 to train you it's designed to to get you confident in god you know the the eagles are fed in the nest they're, they're they're all of their needs are met in the nest and if it's up to them they will stay in the nest you have any any grown up in your life that would just stay in the nest if you didn't stir it up maybe some of you maybe some of you uh god is saying well you know what you know what you've been here too long see the stirring of the left is a mess the stirring of the nest is a message that you've been in this place too long Thank you, Jesus. And so we want, we want to deal with that. So I want you to um, go with me, please, to, um, well, don't, don't go anywhere yet. Just stay right there. You, you're in Deuteronomy, right? Okay. Now, 
Um, <laughs> this is going to be kind of good today. When I say kind of good, see, what we're going to look at this is a we're going to see a picture of the difficult part of the maturity process. <laughs> this is not this is the part a lot of folks don't like to deal with, but but this is a picture of God God difficult process of bringing maturity into our lives. All right? Now, so, if we're going to soar into the higher purposes of God, we have to get out of the nest. Right? If we're going to do this, we can't do this in the nest. If we're going to soar like God wants us to, if we're going to experience the exhilaration and the freedom and it's the power of soaring on the wings of the spirit of the living God we have to get out of the nest and as he's just effortlessly flying effortlessly effortlessly flying and gliding and just enjoying God's goodness see we that's what God has for us but we have to get out of the nest those that are flapping and struggling and 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 trying to make things happen see we can never get to that part if we don't deal with the nest part. Are you following me? Now how many of you would just love to just effortless. Now he's still got some issues. But they're beneath him. He doesn't allow. He doesn't let what's going on on the ground. Stop him from being who God has called him to be. And this is what he's speaking to us today. Sometimes we can get so earth bound. Chicken coop bound. That we forget that we were designed to soar. Like God wants us to soar. And so the mother eagle knows. For my baby to, to, to get to this place. I got to get him out of the nest. So we're going to talk about this nest. Now I, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. That, that this eagle. The, the, as the baby. Give me the eagle that's in the nest. You know, we, we, we talk about this. I'm not going to keep them in there long. But see, this is a windy day here. This is a windy day. And the eagle is trying to fly. Now, I'm sure this eagle come to the edge of the nest and say, shoot, what if I fall? Just like we all face a fear of failing. See, a lot of us don't get out the nest because, well, what if it doesn't work? What if I fall flat on my face? That's why we don't get out of the net. Why do people stay in the net? Because they're, they're afraid of failing. Why don't people stay in the net? Well, see, I was, I was in this net. I've been in this net a long time. I'm comfortable in this net. I'm not familiar with all that freedom out there. I need something for, to put my feet on. And see, a lot of times we stay in a place too long, in a situation too long, in a relationship too long. We just stay there because what am I going to do? I don't know anything else. And God is like, that's why you trust me. And so I wanted to talk about that because, and remember we told you last time, see the reason why he's not flying, those wings are not designed to work in the nest. So a lot of the, we, we sense that God is telling them, we know that God has put this in me, but I'm trying to do it, I'm trying to do it, I'm trying to do it in the nest. And I can't do it, I got to, I got to get out the nest. I got to give him like the song said, all of me in order to soar like God wants me to soar. So how many folks today, how many folks today, you ready to get out of the nest? Amen. All right. So now, if I'm going to get out of the nest, yes, my wings may get ruffled a little bit. Yeah. Ain't no maybe to it. They will be ruffled. But that's okay. Yes, yes, I'll be, yes, I'll have to deal with storms and waves of criticism. Yes. You'll have to deal with that. That's all a part of getting out the nest. And see, but don't let people, don't let people in the in the in the chicken coop criticize you when you're trying to get out the nest. Don't even listen to them because they don't know. They have no perspective. I remember one time a guy told me, he said, he said, man, don't don't pay attention to folks. He said, don't pay attention to folks that criticize you that's never that's never started or sustained anything. They don't know, they don't know what that's all about. They know what they think they know. How many of y'all here, you started a business from zero? Raise your hand. Okay, you started a business from zero. People don't know, people don't know what you do when you're away from, you know, you're smiling up there and then when they're coming in, when you're smiling, they think, they think you're always like that. They don't see you and you got, good law. <laughs> Electric bill costs what? Y'all better start turning these lights off. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, no, they don't, they don't, they don't see. 
They don't see you. you you're sitting there, man, I hope, man, God, I, God, shit, da, 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 da. man, I hope this work. They don't see. They don't understand. See, they see you and they think, oh, you, oh, you knew this was going to be like this. You knew this was going to work. It's a whole nother dynamic. So I'm going to tell y'all the same thing. Told me, don't, don't listen to folks that never started or sustained anything. They don't know. Folks, all of these things have work for somebody. They don't know nothing. All they know is how to work for somebody. Anybody can do that. This ain't in my notes. I just, this just came up. But it's the truth, though, isn't it? Business owners, isn't it true? Yeah. Yeah. They don't see the days when, shoot, when am I going to get paid? They don't see all that. And you got to get out the nest, man. That's why a lot of folks don't get up. They talk, they talk about, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to win. 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 Then they find out about the three letter man. Oh, y'all know who that is. I just talked about it. He won what? Why we got to pay him off? Oh, I'm the first time I, I thought about well, how all these shoot. I'm gonna get start getting rid of some of these employees, all this payroll tax. I'm just playing. I didn't I'm, That was back then. That was back then. But but yes, watch it. But yeah, why why people don't get out of there? Well, it's scared of setback. Yes, there will be setbacks. Yes, there will be people like, why are you doing this? You don't understand. Yes, all of that happened. But can I give you a word? This ain't from God. This is from Friendly. You got to be willing to miss it to make it. You got to be willing to miss it to make it. Folks stand in the net, a lot of folks are standing there, they ain't willing to miss it. You got to be willing to look foolish to soar. You got to be willing, and, and that's part of it. Now, you may not be starting a business, but that's something God is speaking to you in your life, and you still, remember last week, if you were here last week, we, we, I kind of stayed on this. I said, we got to quit lying to ourselves about stuff. We got to quit lying to ourselves about why I'm standing in the nest. <sighs> okay, so now, so last time, and this is where I'm going to spend the bulk of my time today. We said our nest is the comfort zone. <laughs> the comfort zone. Let's deal with the comfort zone again. again. See, our nest is that comfort zone, that place where we're real familiar with everything. We know how everything pulls to flow. I'm comfortable here. I don't have to stretch here. I don't have to change. I don't have to evolve. I don't have to learn anything else. I can just sit where I'm at and, and be, and I'm, and I'm, and I, and I, I'm okay with it. Comfort zone is a place of complacency. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's a place where, where I, can, I can navigate without any kind of stress whatsoever. Comfort zone. Comfort zone is a place where... <laughs> Ooh. The place where... My potential, though, dies. It's a place where, see, the comfort zone is not your friend. It's a trap. I said the comfort zone, your comfort zone is not your friend. It's, your tra it's a trap. It, bring, it puts me into a mold where, you know what, I, don't, I can't really see the consequences of it. But you know what, I do it because it works for me. Some people have comfort zone of being late for everything. Some people have a comfort zone being late for church. They don't, they're not late for work, but they'd be late for church. No, and you know, it's, it, it is what it is. It's, it's, I'm, I'm comfortable walking in late. Well, Pastor, you trying to fuss at us? No. I don't care where you come in. That's between you and God. But I'm just telling you, people with a comfort zone, see, it's hard for me. But some people have comfort zone there. Some people have a comfort zone. See, see, I don't want it'll sound like a meddling, but but some people have a comfort zone with excuses. Excuses are just little nice, sweet lies. How come you come to church today? I ain't had no ride, girl. That was Sunday, Monday. You going to work? Oh, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there five minutes early. 
well, how come you how can how can you couldn't be the church at all? I didn't have a ride. But you got the church. I mean, you got the work. That's because I got a ride. You could have got a ride to church. You know a lot of people going, going to the church. They even got a van that'll come get you. So don't say you, you didn't have a ride. Just say you didn't want to go. But see, some people, comfort zone, see, and this is why, golly, this is where we got to tell the truth about it. Quit lying to ourselves. Just say, just say I'm trifling in that area right now. Y'all didn't see that coming, did you? I didn't either. I really, I really didn't plan on saying that. But it's the truth. No, right in that area, right there, I'm trifling. And, and <laughs> trifling, trifling. <laughs> so so the, the comfort zone, I said the comfort zone is not your friend. The comfort zone will sabotage your God-given potential. And no worthwhile objective, no worthwhile objective can be achieved if I don't leave the confines of my comfort zone. You listening? Yeah. And so, so this is what this nest represents. And God goes to great extreme to get us to stir up the nest, to stir it up so that we can get out of the comfort zone. Yeah. Now the comfort zone is kind of crazy because it will not accept any kind of challenges. It won't accept it. It won't let challenges come in. Don't challenge me, preacher. Don't challenge me, spouse. Don't challenge me, um, job. What do you mean I have to start doing this? Com your comfort zone will scream and it will kick and it will rebel. And sometimes, because it won't accept challenges. But see, if the mother had not, see, the, the eaglet will never realize the power of flight if the mom hadn't challenged the potential that it has in them. Well, I'm saying that it's about us. There's stuff in us that will never manifest, never manifest, if we don't get out from behind the confines of the comfort zone. And God has challenged us. God has sent people into our life to challenge us. And we have to just look at it as, wow, this is, okay, this is challenge. Just because I don't like it, don't feel like it, don't want to do it, doesn't mean it's not God. Okay. So, God stirs the nest to challenge our possibility. I, um, I read, a, read where Pat Riley, he used to be the coach for the Miami Heat, and now he's the, I guess, GM. But he said this in his book, the winner within about complacency. He says complacency is the last hurdle for any winner before attaining potential greatness. Glory to God. It's the last hurdle for any winner or team before attaining greatness. So, so you could be a winner, but there's greatness. And he said complacency is the last hurdle. And he said it because he said complacency is the success disease. It takes root when you're feeling good about who you are and all that you've done. So complacency rests and say, I'm good, I'm good, I, I'm, I'm good. Look at, look at what I've done. And they're always referring back to the path of what they've done instead of looking at the future where they're going. And see, one of the things to keep people in the nest is so, because they're so fearful, they're so fearful of failing or fearful of it not working instead of being inspired about the next level. So, I want you to go to Psalm 78. And let's see something that God says about it because I want to get you out of, the, out, of the, out of the nest today. Glory to God. I think we're supposed to soar in every aspect and every area of our lives. We are. I'm telling you what, I mean, you, you, I don't know, this is, this, mm. okay, you in Psalm 78? Okay, look at verse 41, and I want you to see this because of the mindset a lot of times we have. See, yes, again and again, they tempted God, and they did what? And limited the Holy One of Israel. Obviously, he's talking about the children of Israel. So, Complacency can limit what God can do in your life. See, a lot of people think, and I, used, I think I used to say this, a lot of people think that whatever God purposed or planned for your life, if it's what he purposed and planned, it's going to come to pass. 
a lot of people think that it's going to automatically come to pass. That 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 attitude won't allow me to see what God has because because we have to cooperate with God. We have the Bible says we they went working together with him and he confirmed his word with signs following. So so just because God wills it and wants it for me does not mean that it's automatically going to happen. Cuz see see it's the will of that that ego to fly but if that eagle never gets out of the nest, it will die in the nest. And whatever God has for you, and, and he shows you, he's responsible to show us. He'll show it to you, but if I don't cooperate with him, like, you know, several people raise their hand. God, God probably told them, do, start this business, start this enterprise, whatever. And you can, you can pray all day long. You can, you, can, you can strategize all day long. But until you put some action to it, and and start cooperating with the the law of progress, what, what God tells us to do, it will never happen. Even though that's God's plan and His will for your life. Are you following me? They they limited the Holy One. My comfort zone, my complacency can limit what God wants to bring to pass in my life. My not wanting to, to stretch anymore, not wanting to learn anymore. See, you, you, none of us, none of us has arrived yet. Did you, did you, 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 you figure that out, right? None of us has arrived. And so I can't, you know, in the series we're talking about doing trust in God, I can't expect God to advance me any more steps or instructions until I've taken the first one. What I've done with the first step determines what God does with the next one. But the other thing is too, those that hunger and thirst shall be filled. So, so my complacency is going to take me beyond where I'm comfortable. Yeah, okay, I, okay, I've got this. I've gotten this. I've mastered this. But see, there's so much more out there. And God is saying, if you will, if you will flow with me, I can take your places. Now, I'm on, I don't know. I'm on. I think I want to say something. Y'all want me to say it? Y'all not going to get mad right now? Okay. There's some of y'all sitting in here right now. And you know you're supposed to be experiencing a greater degree of success in your life, peace in your life, impact in your life. And, and all of us, you know, maybe I need to tell on me. And I can soften the blow I'm about to deliver. <laughs> now we grown. We can handle it. And we need to quit lying to ourselves about how much we are doing, accomplishing, and where and where we are. But it's a, it's some of us in here supposed to be experiencing way more. Way more. You got you got ability, you got talent. You have opportunities. You have learning. My mom used to say, education. You got learning. You got connections. You got people that's for you. And you know you're not experiencing anywhere near what you're supposed to be. Why? You smart. You love God. You read the Bible. You pray in them dumb, dumb tongues. But you know you're not experiencing anything. And you've been lying to yourself. <laughs> I came by here today to get you out the nest. Well, Pastor, why? If I got all that, why am I not? Because. You will not go beyond that realm of the familiar. You'll just stay there. You'll get to the edge. You're like, no, I ain't trying to go through all of that. I remember last time I tried something. That nest will snatch you back in there. And so that's why God sent me today to come and come up behind you. Like, the, you know, that mother eagle, that, that baby you just in there having a good time. And that mama you coming from behind her. She comes out of nowhere. 
They didn't plan it. Okay, on the 3rd of October, we're going to fly. They don't do that. <laughs> they come when you least expect it. Shoo. Some of us seem stuck, just stuck. Why? Because I'm comfortable here. I'm comfortable in this misery. I'm comfortable, you know, with somebody attending to me, complacent. I, this is, I, you know, I, I'm doing way better than my mama did. Give me a break. And then sometimes we'll compare ourselves with other. We'll find somebody that's not flying as high, and we'll compare ourselves with them. And then we'll see, see, I'm not that. I'm, I'm okay. So today, this is not for somebody else. This this message is for us. Got every every. I, I had to tell myself to say, Penny, you got every. You know, you know, in this area, you know, you're supposed to be. You started coasting. I'm, I'm talking to myself. You started coasting. And when you start coasting, you stop stretching. When you start stop start coasting, you stop reaching. When you stop mm, when you start coasting, you stop taking a risk. See, you can be in a fight so long that you're like, man, let's leave well enough alone. I ain't trying to try nothing new. But see, you'll never, you'll never, you'll never experience God coming down and, and right when you're about to fall and lift you up. We got to trust God. I want to get you out the nest today to trust God. We sing all these songs. We, we know the scripture. God is faithful. God is faithful. Well, he's faithful to catch you when you fall. He's not going to let you fail. I say he's not going to let you fail. He's not going to let you fail. If God be for you, who can be against you? But he said all things, we talked to Wednesday tonight, everything will work out for your good when you love him and you're called according to a purpose. When you're calling, it's not, you're not just going to waltz up into to your calling or just walk, float over to the other side. It ain't going to happen like that. There's somebody called the devil and there's something called the law of progression. Or process, excuse me. Because if I can't maximize this level, I'm not even ready for this one. The fact that God is stirring your nest is letting you know. Listen, you've been here too long and there's something better for you up here. So come on. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Pastor, it ain't comfortable out there. I know it's not. But this will kill me. I'll die in this place with all this potential from God. Go to John chapter 15. John chapter 5, please. Woo. Hallelujah. Man, I'll tell you what, I ain't, I'm not going to get stuck and stay stuck. I'm not going to tell little lies so I can feel better about where I'm at. And I'm not going to limit God. Glory to Jesus. Okay. Let me know when you get to John 5. If you're not there, we have it on the screen. Now, one thing about Jesus, Jesus never hesitated in telling people to leave their familiar lives. In John chapter 5, verse 5, he said, Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Wow. 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had already had been in that condition a long time, 38 years. And he said to him, do you want to be made well? Well, what kind of question is that, Jesus? Why did Jesus ask that question? Because you can be in a position, in a place, a relationship, a state of mind, a comfort zone, you know, so long. So long that you get comfortable there. It's familiar to me. Listen, I got people coming to clean my house. I got folk doing my laundry. I got folk doing my grocery shopping. Sure. I do have a remote to change my channel, but if I ask them to do that, they come do that. Listen, I'm getting attention. I never got before. I got, listen, I'm getting sympathy. People always ask me, how you doing? How you feeling now? Can there anything we can do? So, see, see that comfort zone, it's like, hey, hey, I remember 
um, I remember, I remember talking to a person, and uh, they had a condition, and so they they're getting disability now. Well, they've been getting it for years. They've been getting it for years, probably thirty eight years. So I don't know, a long time. And uh, I said, well, you know, wow. And this is that preacher too. That preacher. And uh, I said, well, you know, you know, you know, you know, God is a healer. You you talk about that. And this is what the person told me. If I get healed, I gotta go to work. I know. He said, well, if I get healed, I gotta, I stop getting my check. So I said, so you want to do dialysis for the rest of your life because of a check? He said, what's wrong with that? I said, nothing. To me, nothing. I, okay, that's where you at. I get healed. I had I had somebody in the church say say something very similar. You know, the BA paying me, BA paying me this. I, don't pray for me. Wow. You know, I know some of y'all like, oh my God. I gotta, well, we all got our areas of comfort. Because that's some stuff, I'm sure if you examine my life, you're like, you're comfortable with that? I'm sure I, I look at your life and you know you're better than that. So he asked this man. I, he, Jesus, I know what I want to do. But see, it's not, see, just let me know. It's not up to just God. So he had to ask him. And, and see, that's the thing. I mean, sometimes we we have people because they've been in something so long. You you can just sell in them, and 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 they they, they watch this, watch this. <laughs> Do you want to be made well? And the sick man answered, "Yes, Jesus, I want to be made well." No, he didn't. Look at what he said, sir. I had no one to put me on the pole. And when the water is stirred up, but while I'm coming, another step down before. What does that have to do with what Jesus asked him? Jesus said, do you want to be well? Yes or no? But see, when you've been in that place so long, that's why I said we got to quit lying to ourselves. He lied to himself so much about being in there. Now he blaming it. He blaming his healing on other folks. Other folks. You my problem. You my problem. This church, oh my God, Jesus. I ain't gonna say it though. People are something. But anyway, see, we can be so comfortable making excuses that we can't even see. Watch him. He said, he didn't even go say, he said, I don't have a man. Well, who's standing before you? What's standing before you? You got somebody right here that can push you in the pool. You, you should have said, Are you here to push me in the pool? But no. No. He wants to give this long litany about, you know, when, I, when I'm here, folk just come, come, folk come in here and run. They just run right in front of me and they go jump in the pool. They see me sitting here. They know I've been here a long time. You would think they'd give me a pass today, but they don't care about me, Jesus. Don't nobody care about me. That's called a pity party. But see, watch this. When you're in your comfort zone, You'll be all right with pity part. He probably rehearsed this. This part has probably been going on a long time. And he had a script in his mind. When somebody asked me this, this is what I said. Watch this. <laughs> oh, Jesus didn't ask him anything about somebody putting you in the pool. But here's Jesus, because he's good at telling people to leave their familiarity. Jesus said to him, get up. Take up your bed and walk. And what? Oh, the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. So, so sometimes, sometimes God needs to send somebody to us to help us get out from the confines of the comfort zone. So we can get up and do what God wants us to do. In this case, God wants this man to experience life in abundance to the full until it overflows. 
Wow. So I want to, you know, I I, um, I want us to become, you know, I know it's football season. And, uh, boy, that was a good game yesterday, uh, Florida State. But uh, and I thought about it, like, because they, they talk about what they call the red zone. You know what the red zone is? And so I said, wow, we got to get from the comfort zone to the red zone so we can go into the end zone. Yeah, so so I guess that's what I, maybe I should have changed my message today and called it the red zone to the end zone or something. I don't know, but 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 see, red zoners, <laughs> end zoners stretch themselves. Watch this, even when things are going good. Now that's a, that's a big statement, but see when things are going well, we have a tendency to just relax and put it in cruise control. But end zoners, they stress, even when things are going well, they don't believe their own press. <laughs> they don't believe all the things that people are saying because they realize, you know, I know their seasons. And so, see, we live in such a competitive, accelerated world right now. And if you out there, if you out there in that world, this world is competitive, it's accelerated. And see, just being complacent and just, just being happy going to a job and cutting it like it used to. Because technology is changing, the way work people are changing, and, and, and you know, these little, and, 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 and people they're bringing in are changing. But, but until, if you're, not, if you're not able to make transition and changes, you're going to be changing out the door. And so, and that's in the work, in the natural. But in the kingdom of God, you cannot soar with God if you're not willing to not move, be moved by what you see. And, and being able to, to make the move and shift when God said, okay, that was the season. That season is over. I was talking to my folks the other day. I said, I was reading this book called The Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow Anointing. Yeah. And so, and, and what this guy was saying is that he said a lot of times we try to take, take, take yesterday's anointing and use it in today. And he said, no, that was for yesterday. That's why you see a lot of things in the Bible, it was one time. You'll never hear about this again. That was yesterday. That was a season. That was a time. And so if people are like that, and, 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 and our perceptions and mindsets are like that, and so i got to be able to challenge, you know, somebody else can challenge me, but i got to be able to challenge myself. I don't need adult supervision. i got Holy Ghost supervision. And, and he's speaking to you. That even now while I'm sitting here now, he's talking to some of you about, you know what, you, you allowed yourself to get comfortable with this. Five years ago, you would have never done this. You would have never done this. And now, for some reason, you, you allow yourself to get comfortable in it, and you're wondering why the, the progress is not there. How many, well, you don't have to answer, but, but, well, I tell on me. There was an area in my life where, man, I was just, I took off like a ballistic, like a ballistic missile, an ICBM, intercontinental something. Ballistic missile, yeah. And then, and then, and then all of a sudden the thing started leveling off. I'm like, okay, well at least it's moving. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, this ain't working. And then, then you trace it back. That's why we have a teacher. You trace it back. You're like, wow, I got complacent on that. Okay, all right, I know what to do. I know what to do. But see, you can lie to yourself for a while. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Now, let me read something to you. Well, it's, it's got a couple of statements. Being willing to give up the familiarity of the unknown and embrace the discomfort that comes from being outside of your comfort zone is crucial to soaring like God planned for you to soar. I said unknown. Giving up the familiarity of the known and then embracing. How many know it's uncomfortable to embrace the unknown? It's uncomfortable to go outside of the comfort zone. It's, that's why it's uncomfortable to be out of the comfort zone. But to embrace, to embrace the discomfort of the unknown is how I get to soar. I have a question for you, then we're going to close. <sighs> if you knew that God had you no matter what, 
What action would you take that you aren't taking now? I remember Ernestine, the right after us. Did y'all get blessed for Ernestine yesterday? Yeah. yeah. I remember we, we were talking was after Saturday prayer one time, and she, well, it was a couple weeks ago, and she said that with such conviction. She said, Pastor, I know God got me. What you going to do with a person that knows God got them? You will try anything. You will, if you just think God just thought it, you will try it because, you know, I can't. This little exercise I do to myself. I can't fail obeying God. I cannot fail. Are you kidding me? I'll be screaming, though, but I got the mic. I don't want y'all to be. God loves me. God is crazy about some kin friendly. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious. I'm, 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 I believe God loves me. God, I can't fail. Obeying God, I can't fail. Acting on this word, even when I make mistakes. Because I mean, we're going to make mistakes. But, but I love him. I've given my life to him. For the last 30 years, I've been living for him. I put no human being before God. I don't care what they think about me. I'm not going to diminish and, and water down my love and commitment to God. I'm God. I love God. And he loves me. So I expect whatever I put my hands to, to prosper. Just crazy prosper. I expect to multiply. Whatever I put my hand to, to multiply. I expect to make, when I say, God, I'm going to make a difference. I, I expect it. Why? Because he said, all things work together for my good. He said, if God be for me, who can be against me? He said, he will never leave me, never forsake me. He said, it's him, he, it's him who is working me to will and do his own good pleasure. I got God energy. And so, jumping out of the comfort zone, I still don't like it. But it's normal to me now because God got me. I'm telling you, when you sold me that baby, I mean, Miss Ernestine, <laughs> she'd be looking so young. But, but, but that thing just went all over me. And, and God got me. See, some people haven't been convinced yet that God got them. And that's why we stay in the nest. The saints don't have to stay in the nest. Listen, the saints, we're supposed to be, man, we're supposed to be prospering to such a degree that folks are busting down the door, you know, making a path to our house. It's like, how you, how you doing all of this? And you can say, well, you know what? I, I, you know what? I really can't even explain it all. All I know is I trust him. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the best I can with him. But, 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 but beyond that, let me, I wrote something down. <laughs> Y'all okay? I'm okay. What did I write down? What's that one about? Those that were, what is that one? I wrote, uh, I wrote something down I wanted to say to you. I said that. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Those who are willing to step out of their comfort zone into the discomfort of uncertainty will be those who reap what God had promised them. Let me say that again. Those who are willing to step out of their comfort zones into the discomfort of uncertainty will be those who reap what God has promised. There's no rewards in the comfort zone. I'm already rewarded. What? I'm comfortable. And so God is, is telling all of us, listen, don't limit me, but come on out of the comfort zone. See, there's things he's telling you right now. He's telling you. And, and he's reminding you. You know, I told you. Listen, well, well, God, I don't know. I don't know anybody did that. I never. I, I, what, if they, what if they laugh at me? Come on out. Come on out. <laughs> Be willing to risk failure and looking foolish. In our ever-changing and competitive world, there is little security in playing it safe. The saints can't, you know, that's the oxymoron to play a safe with God. Why am I playing it safe? I'm not saying doing something outlandish, but, but playing it, 
playing it safe is, I mean, you know, some things, you, know, you ain't have to be all that spiritual, but you know something inside of you is scratching you. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this, and you know what? And think about it, I remember, you know, I talk about how, I see, I see Tamara, hi Tamara. That's a dessert first. The finest cake and cookies in Anchorage, Alaska. Huh? Chocolate pound cake? Puss. Pound cake. Okay. But she, when I mention that she's up here like, I, 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 all I could read was pound cake. So you must, you must be throwing down on that cake. Well, I know she do, because I tell Deb, just get a piece. Go get a piece, because you bring the whole thing home, it'll be gone. Yes, I will sit in front of the TV with a mindless TV program on and eat that whole cake. So I had to monitor myself. But anyway, I remember, I remember, I knew her when she was a young girl. Well, yeah. But she always talked about that dream. That's why I love you so much. And you tried some stuff. You jumped out here, jumped in there. And you went through some adversity. But you never gave up. And God got you. I appreciate people. Now, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not. I don't not like people. <laughs> but the folks that turn me on are the folks that, because I'm one of them. I'm, I'm one of them. I'm one of y'all. I'm one of them. The folks that will jump out the nest and say, God, you better, <laughs> I hope you hear. Because <laughs> I'm thinking this is you. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, man, God has been so, God has, I don't know how many times God has swooped down. Had, had had Deb on the left wing and had me on the right wing and we holding on <laughs> but I'll tell you something else he's taking us into areas where only the eagles can soar I thought I was thinking about yesterday like wow I remember I mean I had amazing things happen I mean just some things I never imagined that I would do in places I would be in and God did that I'm about to have a moment if I do that. Okay. Did you answer my question? I said, what would you do if you knew God has you no matter what? What actions would you take that you're not taking now? Because he got you. And that's why that scripture in Deuteronomy talks about he, he, he cares for you. Now he's going to let you He's going to let you have your moment now. But that's all designed to create a dependence on him and not on human beings. That's why he let you let people, that's why he let people let you down. Just so you can be reminded. They're human. <laughs> I never promised you they would always be with you. <laughs> yeah, I never promised you they would make a way of escape for you. So, so he let us, he let us do things and, and let people, you know, cause us to fall flat on the face. And then, uh, to see, I was trying to tell you, make me your insignificant other. In ten years from now, ten years from now, there will be people in this room who would have achieved some just obnoxiously incredible, extraordinary success you know I can size you up but I don't really know you so I don't know exactly who that is and nobody's giving me any hints but I know who it won't be I can tell you that I'm a prophet <laughs> I can tell you who it won't be I can tell you 10 years from now you you won't be there. That per deep people won't be there. Who is that pastor? Don't be looking at me like that, Pastor. Don't be looking at me like No. Who won't be 10 years from now? You'll be in the same situation. Just, you know, maybe a little, you know, grayer or shinier. Or 10 years from now, gonna be the people that remain in the comfort zone. Don't bounce around one side of the nest 
to the other. Still giving excuses. Still talking about what the man is holding me back. Still talking about, well, I would have done this if, if, if I'd have had opportunity. Now I wait, I gotta wait till I'm 60. That's who would never ever move forward. And it's a tragedy because what God put in you is absolutely incredible. So it's time for us to stop letting life pass us by. And, you know, I'm not, you don't need to confess to anybody else. You need to confess, let's confess to ourselves. Wait, you know, how many of you here, let's, let's do this, though. I will do this. And it's okay. How many of you here right now, as, as God dealt with your heart, you already know, wow, I'm better than this. There's more in me that I'm doing now. I know it, and maybe some part of this message related to you. Would you raise your hand? Okay, that's a good, that's a good following, a good showing. And that's what I want to do. I ain't trying to make friends. I'm trying to make a difference. I am trying to make, I, I sent y'all a text this morning. Well, I programmed it to come out this morning. <laughs> to, man, if you make a commitment to God, he will see to it that it comes to pass, especially if it's about ministering and helping other people. But, Touch seven people, I'm not, not this week, where you can make a difference to. I'm looking for some folks that will make a difference. The folks I want to run with, I, I, I'm, I'm, my, my crowd, my, 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 my run with crowd is slimming. Because I'm only looking for folks that want to make a difference in the lives of other people. Amen. Okay, let me give you this and then we, we'll go. Okay, you turned it off too quick. I was, you might wonder. No. Here's some things. Here's some. I, I probably ought to put this in a thing. But it's time to raise the bar on yourself. It's time to raise the bar on yourself. Raise the bar. You know, raise the bar on yourself. Raise the bar in terms of making a difference in other people's lives. Raise the bar where you're not just consumed with, okay, how, what am I going to do? Thank God for that, but raise the bar. Live your life from a place of urgency. What do you mean by that? See, some of us live like we got 150, 200 more years to live. You, you know what I mean? Live your life like from a sense of urgency. Like, man, I don't know how many more days I got. Make every day count. What can I do today? Don't get me wrong. You got to have days of, of relaxing and chilling and sitting in front of TV and eating ice cream and cookies. But that's not every day. But even that has a purpose. You got to relax and recharge with a piece of that cake. <laughs> okay. Live a life where you're willing to stretch. Kind of people I'm looking for, the kind of people I want to run with, are people who are ready to make a mark. Like Pastor Dollar said, make a mark with your life that cannot be erased. Making a mark with their life instead of just making all these marks all over their lives. I mean, I, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with tattoos. I mean, you know, you won't tattoo yourself up, but just make a mark with your life. Last thing. Focus. Everybody say focus. focus. Man, you got to learn how to focus. And probably time for me to bring that message back out. But focus. Because you know what? You're going to always have distractions around you. Learn. Tune out distractions. Tune out distractions. Your life. I mean, if you just take, just take what we talked about here today and begin to incorporate them. But, but tune out distractions. And your filter will become really really good you're like oh I can't even entertain this because this is a distraction this is not adding to where I'm going I'm getting out of the nest um, my life is going to make a difference somebody's going to be impacted by my presence and by my existence 
starting today. I want you to make the difference. I want you to, you know, again, I, I, I feel funny when I say this all the time, but I guess y'all okay with it because y'all came back to hear some more. Um, you know, we'll quit lying to ourselves. Quit lying. Just quit lying. That's why Paul talked about so much. Stop lying. Well, that includes to ourselves too. I'm not better than somebody else. Okay, I might have this, and I might have it. And the way we, we judge each other by, based on how much they got, what they look like, what the, but I don't mean squat. In the, I mean anything. In the economy of God, that means nothing. What God is like, whose life is better because of you? Not how big your house is or your car or how much. That means nothing to me. Whose life is better? How big is the vineyard you're, you're impacting? And so, you're going to be hearing a lot about making a difference in this next 18 months, probably. Because that's where it is. And see, a lot of times, we don't want to get out of the nest because I'm, it makes us vulnerable. Now i got to expose my heart. I'm tired of my heart being ripped out. God got you. I told you God got you. So maybe we need to back up and realize how much God loves me. Man, I could tell y'all stuff. Y'all be like, are you kidding and I wouldn't be kidding. He said, like, man, I would have, you know, that was me. I know, that's the way I was feeling. But God got me. Stand up, everyone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Those of you who are ready to get flung out into the wild. <laughs> flung into the wild. I want to, I want us to seal that. I'm calling this seal in this message. The name of Jesus. Father, there are people in here today. There's a lot of us in here today. And we're ready to come out of that comfort zone. We want to be not comfort zoners, but end zoners. And in Jesus' name, we determine and purpose right now that we will quit lying to ourselves we will quit hiding behind the excuses and because we don't want to limit what you wanting to do in our life and are doing and want to do and will do in our life. We understand complacency is not compatible with the anointing of God. The comfort zone is not compatible with our desired growth and development. So in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I pray over every person here, Lord. I pray, Father, that you would expose every comfort zone tendency, that you would not only expose that, but expose the potential that's in them. That eagle has saw their mother soaring. Help them see other eagles soaring so they can be inspired to do what you called them to do. Father, I pray now, thank you for a divine deposit into every heart here. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming out of the nest. We're moving forward. Uh, we're not afraid of unfamiliarity. We're not afraid of the unknown anymore. We're not afraid to fly because God, you got us. I want everybody to lift their hand and say this with me. God, you got me. God, you got me. God, I trust you because you got me. I am going to soar now. Comfort zone. I leave every confinement, every boundary, every limitation in the name of Jesus. Everything folks said about me. Everything maybe my parents said about me. Every lie that was put on me. I rise above it now. I soar above it now. I soar above mistakes now. I soar above my past. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, extraordinary, successful people. Extraordinary, blessed people. Extraordinary, making a different people. I bind every comfort zone demon. We're not going to be comfortable. Listen, 
every my God every I said it's about the comfort zone it is not your friend even if you just you know some people just got again I, I mentioned about being late well see that's not your friend because that'll take you into other areas it's not just that it'll pull you over to other areas the comfort zone is a trap it's a snare it's a trap so in Jesus name I decree you delivered from that I, de I decree us delivered from that trap now father I thank you that we're difference makers in here today now my prayers for every person in this room and you have not received Jesus Christ as your savior if you um, if you're here and you have not you you don't you don't have a home church you need you need a pastor in your life you need somebody like me that will help you get out of your nest see and a lot of times people don't join church because of what happened 15 years ago no I ain't joining no church yeah but you're gonna call a church when you need some help and I understand that but forget that part you need somebody speaking into your life and if you're really to, ready to walk in the things of God and don't mind being challenged because I am going to challenge because I'm not listen I'm not talking to chickens I am talking every week to eagles and eagles eat this kind of food and you're going to be extraordinarily this is going to be the most successful 12 months between now and next October you've ever seen in your life some of between now and December going to be the best 12, because some of, some of you get ready to get out and fly you got, I'm going somewhere I break that but if you're here this morning before we go and you want to make Jesus Lord of your life I'm telling you He's got you. But Pastor, I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I've been walking with him 30 years. I still make mistakes. That's because I'm human. But God doesn't fall off his throne because I make mistakes. And he won't fall off his throne because you make them. And he won't stop loving you. You need a savior this morning. We talked about that. We saying that. You need a savior. You need a deliverer. Stuff that you can't do yourself. You need him. And now you may be a church member, but I'm not talking about that. Did you receive him? You need the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You need the power to soar above. Unlimited power God gives us. Lord, thank you for it. So before we go, I want to pray. If there's anybody in here this morning, you say, Pastor, I'm going to quit lying to myself. I'm going to quit lying to myself. I am not in fellowship with God, and I want to be. If I'm talking to you, I want you to raise your hand. And that will signal to me to pray. I don't, don't leave here this morning without being in the right place in the right position with him I want you to soar like you never had before and maybe you corrected it in your seat is there anybody in here this morning alright now I charge every 